We live in a society where people sometimes choose between going to the movies or picking up a good book to read. Oftentimes, a movie is based on a book, or a graphic novel, or a play, or a comic book series, or an animated TV series, or just something else that's not original to the film. What if I told you, and please bear with me on this for a second as I guide you on this journey, that you could go to a film, watch it, understand it, leave pleasant, and not have to have had any knowledge that it existed in other formats, such as books, television shows, etc. You get what I'm saying. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Well, it turns out that happens a lot. And the times it's done right, you didn't even know other material existed. And the times that it's done wrong, you point out how it doesn't make sense and then people go online, criticize your complaints and say, read the book. I'm getting fed up. And I know I've talked about this on previous rants, but this is a specific one now to just this initial complaint. I get this time and time again from idiots on YouTube. And it makes no sense. There was a time not that long ago. I know, I know I'm getting up there in age. I'm getting older. We all, we all do. We all age every single day, as a matter of fact. Every single second of every day, as a matter of fact. <laughs> there was a time when it was like not cool to read. It was like edgy to just watch movies and TV and, and reading was for dweebs and nerds. I read. I listen to audiobooks. I actually enjoy it quite a bit. But what the fuck happened where you go to a movie it doesn't make sense, you say it, and then people are like, you're a moron! You need to read the book! You need to have all this information at your fingertips before going in. Or that's your own fault. No, it's the movie's fault! That's why they made the movie! I watched eight out of the nine Harry Potter films before I read the books. The last one I couldn't wait for the film, so I, I burned through the audiobooks and loved it. Loved every minute of it. And you know what? I understood those movies completely. I didn't miss a single thing. As far as the story beats, yeah, sure. There was some parts in the later films where I was like, what? Who's Peter Pettigrew? What? Why do I give a crap about this rat? What's going on? But after re-watching a couple times, I started to piece it together. These movies just go really fast. There's a lot of information. Some of the movies are just embarrassing compared to the books and they shouldn't have been made how they were to begin with, like Percy Jackson. I mean, I understand there's there's people that enjoy those movies, the, the two that they made, but come on. Books are so much better. And so had I read the books before seeing those movies, I would have been just pissed. Instead, I was just mildly annoyed at how bad they were. So it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. The same could be said for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I went into that movie with, uh, you know, David Fincher being one of my favorite directors, thinking, this is going to be amazing, I love the book. And then I saw the movie and I'm like, oh. I mean, I know, I know the mystery, so there's, it's not like there's a ton of action. You know, I'm just waiting for them to figure out what I already know. You know, you, you kind of miss a lot of that um, excitement. Although, to be fair, Scar Skarsgård's typically a villain, and they put him in like a black turtleneck in a mansion, and it was super eerie. So it was pretty obvious he was the bad guy from the onset, even if you hadn't read the book, but whatever. A screenplay's job is to take the pertinent, important information from the book and translate it to something that audiences can understand. This is where video game movies typically really drop the ball. They put in so many Easter eggs from their gaming references that it's lost on a majority of the audience. It, there's just so many tips of the hat or, you know, iconic moments in the movie that are so out of place and dumb typically that only like the hardcore gamers would be like, oh yeah, I love that part. She's got her double guns. The last Tomb Raider, that was such a stupid scene. Like she gets the double gun, she's like, I'll take two. And then the movie ends. And if you'd never played the games, you'd be like, okay, she's got like a gun fetish. Why does she need two? Why is that cool? But anybody that's played like the OG Laura Croft Tomb Raider for like PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn would be like, oh yeah, the double guns, yeah. I wish she had her polygon pointy tits. That would have really sold me. It's even more magnified for people like me too that are huge movie buffs and we see at least a couple a week, whether it's a new movie in theaters or just an older one we missed or just a rewatch of a classic. I wouldn't even have time to get all the literature read you know, be before all these movies come out. And we're not even talking about just books or video games. If it's a period piece, should I have a, a vast understanding of the signing of the Declaration of Independence before I watch Nicolas Cage try to steal it? Do I need to know the ins and outs of Pearl Harbor before I watch one of the multitude of films that have come out on that? I know the basic plot, but I don't know the names of the ships. I don't know the, you know, what, what was happening in the boiler room during, uh, 
you know, the hours of eight to five. Uh, like this is the kind of shit that sometimes crops up in the comments. Like this guy doesn't know the difference between a B-52 bomber and a blah, 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 blah. Like that plane wasn't even in existence. Yet he utters that in the review, which discredits the entire thing. I've really noticed a lot of that revisionist history when it comes to the Star Wars prequels, movies that were not good. If you like them, great. I, I don't give a shit. So many of the new generation grew up watching the Clone Wars series, which I guess is really, really good. I've, I've seen like two or three episodes. I thought they were fine. I'm sure they get way better. I Believe me, I'm sure they do. I just haven't had time to watch them. They somehow interject the goodness of that with the prequel films themselves or take what they did to Anakin in that series, which I guess is a lot more fleshed out and they, they make him kind of a likable, cool, character that becomes a villain instead of the whiny little bitch that turns into Darth Vader and I'm supposed to be impressed by that. They, they, they put those two together in the same bucket. But that's not how people watch movies. The movies have to do the job first. They have to get you there. And if they don't, they ultimately fail. I also have examples of people who read the books but refuse to watch the movie in the fear that the movies will be inferior to the books. In fear, inferior. Not a great sentence, doesn't roll very well. But, um, you know, so what are you supposed to say to those guys? You know, you basically have limited yourself to one media over the other to begin with. Should I go to them and be like, watch the movie? You don't, you can't tell me about the book if you haven't seen the movie. You don't even know what you're talking about. In the movie, this happened, not this. And since this is the newer thing, this is the right thing. Yours is discredited now. You haven't seen the last Harry Potter movie? They don't, they don't battle in the, inside the building. They battle in the courtyard. There isn't people all around. It's just Harry and Voldemort. It's very intimate. It's very one-on-one. -on -one. That's how it should have been the whole time. The director fixed it. I don't actually believe that. I think the book version's better there. I, I, there wasn't enough heart at that last film. I love it to death, but there wasn't enough heart. I hope you get what I'm putting down and maybe you've witnessed this yourself or even had conversations with people that have argued with you. Although usually these happen online because people are too cowardly to say what they feel in, in, in public or they for some reason feel like they have to be bigger dicks when it comes to being, uh, you know, in a comment on YouTube. I don't, I don't really get it. There's something empowering about tearing other people down because their opinion's different than yours. So you have to find ways to discredit them. So often I will flub a word or I'll mispronounce something and that'll be the one thing they pinpoint out of an eight to 12 minute video. And they'll say, boom, discredited. Oh, you admitted it. You admitted it you didn't read the book. What a fool you are. Like I could go in and just pretend I read it or not say anything at all, but I like to give full transparency. But that just really lets the clowns run amok. I haven't ranted about nonsense in a while, so I thought this would be a fun thing to bring up as it never seems to go away. It doesn't actually bother me anymore outside of a just eye roll and a <laughs> Here we go again. Mamma mia, here we go again. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. If you're part of the read a book club, you can just shut the hell up. Put the book down. Get off my channel. Go do something better with your time. Like watch a movie. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe. There's videos weekly. I, I do a couple a week, as a matter of fact. You can like the video if you had a good time and to show a little bit of support. And you could join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies for even more bonus episodes of shows. If you need more than that, I have plenty to give. I'm on Twitch at twitch.com slash adamolinger where I'm playing games badly. I have a second channel called Adam Olinger. Plus, every Friday you can find me on Screen Rant where I do a show called Real Rivalries pitting two movies head to head. A lot of options for you. Do with that information what you will.